Good morning, Nina Coleman. I'm the Sandy Neck Park Manager and also the Director of Natural Resources for the Town of Barnstable. Hannah Lawrence and I'm the Sandy Neck Assistant Park Manager. Yeah, so we had a four-day um, wind event. Um, it was mostly out of the north and northeast, um, and that generally is an opportunity for turtles to come on shore at Sandy Neck. As you know, they've been coming on shore um, in Wellfleet and, and Truro and those areas because the wind has been favorable, but wind shifted up and it was coming on shore for Sandy Neck, and we, we were prepared. Uh, we've been doing round-the-clock patrols for turtles, and uh, over the four-day event, we had 105 sea turtles um, land at Sandy Neck, and we were able to get those animals off the beach. A lot of them, the vast majority of them, were in really good shape because it's mild. It's very windy, but it's mild. Um, and we really try to get them as soon as possible um, and get them off the beach, and then they have the best chance of survival. We all know Cape Cod is that characteristic hook shape, right? So um, our sea turtles do have to go south once it starts to get really cold. You know, they need to migrate as their food source, you know, dries up up here. And what ends up happening is they get stuck in that hook of Cape Cod. So the water temperatures and the, you know, the outside temperature gets too cold and they end up cold stunning. So they are a reptile. They need that external heat source in order to um, regulate their body temperature. So they end up um, almost freezing. Um, so they need to be picked up and rescued and rehabilitated and warmed up in order to you know, survive. Um, if you find a turtle, you want to move it above the tide line. We don't want that tide to come back in and take it back out. Um, you want to cover it with sand and seaweed. And then the best thing to do is to get a buoy or a stick or anything that you can kind of stake and make it look different. Uh, and then call either the Stranding Network or at Sandy Neck, you certainly can call Sandy Neck uh, Gatehouse. Other beaches in town, you can call Animal Control or Natural Resources and give us a, a location of where that animal is and we'll run out there and pick that up. The water is warmer than the air this time of year, right? That's why we do this huge effort to get out there, even if it's midnight, we would rather get them in the water, like right at the tide line or right when they, when they land, when they beach. So covering that animal is going to keep it from getting wind burn uh, and, even, and even frostbite, which happens when it gets really cold. You, you definitely learn um, where they're going to be located. Um, so we kind of look at uh, wind direction, where the tide was and where the tide is now to determine where the most likely we're going to find them. And then once we find one, we kind of know, okay, this is about, you know, the elevation, if you will, that we need to really focus on. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been a very busy couple of tides here. And so obviously, you know, we are kind of that first line of, um, you know, protection for these guys, right? We pick them up off the beach, but there's also a number of other volunteers um, and other organizations. So we actually work with Mass Audubon um, at a well fleet pretty closely. So we're a staging area once we pick up turtles or if they come from Sandwich or, you know, Barnstable Harbor area, um, Mass Audubon does transport them. They'll typically go to the New England Aquarium, their facility in Quincy, um, where they're going to rehab them, um, as well as some other local, you know, aquariums and organizations. Um, the National Marine Life Center usually gets a number of turtles that are cold stunned off these beaches. Sometimes they fly them down south and release them and then they'll even release them, you know, on our south side beaches so they have a good chance of, you know, surviving and not getting trapped again for the next season. These are the rarest sea turtles in the world, the Kemp's Ridleys, and the vast majority of those animals that we, that we rescued were Kemp's Ridleys. Um, and they're two to three year old animals. Um, so if you think of it as like a cohort, hort, like it's an entire generation, Cape wide, if you, if you know, it's a very small population um, and they're globally rare. So if you have just, you know, that age turtle and there are a lot of them are stranding, um, for us to, to intercept them and keep a bunch of that, that age class alive is essentially saving the species. Um, so there's that added bonus of feeling like you're really making a difference for a species. And the new staff, you know, we, we had, we're very lucky to have hired some new staff this year. They're all coming from biology backgrounds. I mean, this is, this is what they're here for, you know. This is, this is their opportunity to contribute um, for their passion. Um, we also had a number of volunteers. I want to point that out. We did, you know, it was around the clock and we did have a number of people who, cottage owners, 
um, and our Sandinac board members um, that are experienced and have been trained and they were they were able to contribute as well because we were out there like I said midnight I mean you start to get tired at day four so uh, a lot of a lot of people helped and a lot of people were excited and really felt the magic it's magic when you when you rescue one of these animals